Uh, when did I start shaving? Well, I shaved it. I had my first, my first special. I had it shaved. Really? I didn't. Yeah. When I saw you in New York, well, I'm, for glad, the I'm glad you liked it. I, I see I you like losing the roof there in the back. Yeah, You'll be right bit, there with me. We'll do, a, we'll do a buddy cop show. Exactly. Right? Two <laughs> balding old guys. Exactly. Going after some hairy criminal. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of Steve Jobs, personally. What are you talking about? I just. I don't know. I just don't understand what. Why, what the big deal was with that guy. <laughs> I don't get it. He, he's like Edison. I don't know. He invented no. all this stuff. To everybody. What are you but, talking but about? Did he? <laughs> did he? Did like? Did he sit down and like? I'm going to invent the iPhone and just sat there soldering, possibly welding, right? <laughs> Didn't he have, like, a crew of guys helping him out? Sure, maybe he did. So why, when he went to those nerd fests, didn't he have, like, an, like, a, like, a chorus of scientists behind him who helped him out, too? He walked out like he was Tesla. <laughs> like, tapping into electricity. I'm not with you. I think he just kind of, like, told people what to invent. Like, he just kind of came in like, I want my whole music collection in that phone. Get on it! <laughs> and then all these nameless, faceless guys... Yeah. Made it happen. Yeah. And then they have the big nerd concert, and he goes out there by himself. No belt, you know, sneakers on. I just didn't buy it. <laughs> when you took it out on Philly, because they were a bad crowd. Oh, yeah. Your famous rant, yep. which you've since said you like Philadelphia, and that wasn't the issue. You were just giving... People in Philly don't even remember. Uh, basically, if you haven't seen it, I was doing a show uh, for the Opie and Anthony uh, radio program. And they had this show called The Traveling Virus. And we were doing these, like, 10,000 seaters. And we went to Philly. Um, and they're notorious for booing people. And they booed the first guy off stage. And I went on, like, three hours after that. So by the time I got up there, it was a complete shit show. And uh, I don't know. They started booing, and I snapped and decided I wasn't going to leave. And I just attacked everything that they loved. Yeah. <laughs> Can women be funny? Yeah, of course. Will you guys just fucking grow up and just sit down and write your own horse shit and come up with it? Start your own fucking show. Have your own award show. Quit waiting around for other people to do shit for you. That's the fucking problem. If you guys had your own big club and I was standing outside of it, you'd never fucking let me in. I'd start my own shit. You guys got to start your own shit. You got brains in there, right? Uh, I, I, yes, absolutely. So write your own shit and quit your fucking whining. We're all eating a giant shit sandwich out here. Nobody cares. I don't care. Well, when was the last time you went on stage and you killed so hard the person after you bombed? If you're fucking doing that on a regular basis, people are going to notice regardless of what you have between your legs. Yeah, at some point I was going to make a point here. That's why I keep looking at here and I just realize I'm blocking myself out of the camera. I love that you have the jib camera for this like it's an action movie. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's swoop in at these two guys sitting in these unbelievably small chairs. I literally feel like I'm going to fall onto the floor. This is insane. <laughs> You really went all out with the audience, though. They got full-size adult chairs. <laughs> Are these, like, from the 20s before they had, like, horse tranquilizers in our food when everybody was, like, five foot one? And nothing making you mad? Nothing? Nothing? Oh, things upset me. Yes. I, I don't know. I don't want to... Look, I fly a lot, and there's this whole new thing of generation of people that take their socks and their shoes off on the plane, you gotta look at their smelly feet and then they'll literally stand up and they will walk into a commercial airline bathroom. Yeah, use it and then walk and sit back down again. That's not right. Yeah, if I was a dictator, those people would be eliminated. <laughs> I love this dude texting for the entire interview. It's just, it's just trying to keep the attentions of millennials. It's like impossible. Look at him, he's already got the chains. He's probably got his own record label. He's like making deals as we speak. He's got championship rings on. I don't know what you're doing, dude, but I want your life, man. You're crushing it. So are you in the process? I cannot get comfortable in this fucking chair. This is just like one of the worst things. This should be like in a museum. Is like the prototype. This is what... <laughs> this was the awful level of comfort. We went from a log to this, and then eventually they got cushions. It's another guy looking at his phone. I swear to God. Dude, the day Jesus comes back, if he ever does, if he's even a real person, like 90% of people are going to miss it. They're going to walk right. He's going to be walking on water, and they're immediately walking by him. They're not even going to see it. Oh, yeah, and there's a drop-off in fame for Jesus at that point. Everyone was, everyone was paying attention. Now no one gives a shit. Oh, there we go. No, but now this is like the ego one. Now I'm going to be sitting above you. You've got to come with two. 
It's fine. It's fine. Sir, the one, the one comedy through line that's working here is me shitting on this chair. Why would you take that from me? This is, you're just totally going against the grain. I understand it. But you got on camera, so I think you get paid, even though this is online. <laughs> <laughs> you see Sugar Shay Mulsey, one of the greatest boxers of all time. He's losing his championship belt in a divorce. Oh, that's losing it. Yeah, it's like you're trying to break a man. Why does she want those? <laughs> right? I'm gonna break they, a they, man. They, they, they go with their shoes. <laughs> you know? No, and I love how when you get a divorce, all of a sudden it costs like 50 grand a month to give a kid Fruit Loops. Right? <laughs> You. There is an epidemic of gold digging whores in this country, and it is just not being addressed. Oh we recently got a pit bull, which I know a lot of people don't like because they ate a couple of kids. I understand. <laughs> They're great dogs, unless you're a bad owner. If you're a psycho, which I am, you can mess them up. I didn't, I didn't realize that dogs feed off your vibes. No. Like, if you're ch cool, if you're chill, they're chilling. If you're sleeping, they're sleeping. Mm. But if you're a psycho like me, <laughs> and you're watching the game on TV, and you're screaming at the ref, like, you gotta be shit, mate! I didn't realize the dog was in the corner being like, yeah, you gotta be shit. <laughs> being a mother is the hardest job out Most there. Most difficult job Most in difficult. the... Oprah said that. Oprah said that, yeah. Has, yeah. That, has your opinion on that, on that phrase, changed at all since, since no. you've had a kid? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's not the most difficult job on the planet. It just isn't. Dude, I did roofing in July. I almost, as a redhead, I almost died. There's people, there's people that work on like oil. What was that movie that guy made? The oil, the, the fucking, you know, they there drill will be blood. oil. What is it? There will be blood. With not the... there will be blood. The, uh, out in the ocean, they would drill. I can never remember the names. Deepwater. Mark Wahlberg yeah, was Deepwater there. Deepwater Horizon, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those guys were working on, on an oil rig. The fucking thing blows up. They're on fire. They got to jump into water that's on fire. Salty water into their wounds. You got to swim out of that oil and fire and then tread water. Praying to God that the Coast Guard is going to get there before the sharks do. Now talk to me about a toddler. Oh, he was so fussy today. I just... He wouldn't eat his peas. Yo, what's up with all these white kids now walking around trying to act like they're like gangster rappers? It's irritating. It's like everywhere I go, man, I figure I'd just be here in the city where you got a good mix of people. You know, I'll be like in the middle of Kansas, though. Like the whitest state ever. There'll be some howdy doody looking white kid like me. You know, I'm thinking this is one of my peeps. Somebody I can have a conversation with. All of a sudden, he's just like, yo, what's up, kid? What's up, kid? I just want to be like, nothing much, Brad. You know, you're keeping it real in Wichita. How the fuck are you going to be a gangster in a state, say, like Nebraska? You know, what do you be like, all hardcore about your crop? Just in there, yo, shit was crazy, you know what I'm saying? My fucking corn was rolling, my fucking scarecrow was tipping over and shit, you know what I'm saying, son? I just want to be like, dude, you're white. Go to the Gap, give in to it. Buy some Dockers and come home. I've been going to gun stores and... Oh, uh, my God. I have, and these rednecks are all telling me the same thing because I didn't grow up with guns. So they're just going, all right, you never had a gun, you want to get yourself a shotgun. It's got a great spread. That's what they keep saying. It's got a great spread. You don't even got to aim. You got a problem, you just sort of whip around. You get the guy, right? I'm sitting there, I'm like, dude, I just want to shoot the guy. I don't have to do, like, a bunch of drywall work to, like, reframe my diploma. So. again. Why can't mom make dinner? Ask her. She's the one who abandoned her post. Not to doing all the lady work, I gotta leave to go do some man work. And is anybody gonna get me flowers and tell me I'm beautiful? No! No one's out there marching for old Frank Murphy. He just watches the sands of his miserable life gather at his feet while his wife, the modern woman, throws on a pantsuit every morning and just... There's my worker, B. Um, what is your go-to dance move when challenged? Uh, waiting for the director to say cut. <laughs> that was my go-to dance. Well, I'll tell you, when I, when I saw my kid, it wasn't, uh, I didn't have, like, everybody was like, you're going to burst down crying, you're going to blah, blah, blah. I was, like, scared of it. Like, I was just sitting there like, hey, yeah, buddy, like, I didn't want to touch it. <laughs> and then, like, afterwards, they give it to me, and I'm hanging with her for the first time, and I'm feeling nothing. 
And I literally put my head down on the bassinet. I'm going, oh my God, I'm a serial killer. Like, I, I don't feel things. Google yourself because I was like Googling the, the show. No, God knows. I was Googling the show. I get trashed enough on Twitter. You, what, Do you know when I did the show what? last night? This is how like, like the millennials are, right? Somebody, uh, I was wearing this exact same thing. You know, I'm on the road, so I got a nice stain <laughs> on my shirt. So I was wearing this exact same thing. I go on Twitter and somebody wrote, uh, you know, Bill Burr last night dressed like, like an out of shape Jerry Seinfeld. What? So like... Yeah, I wrote back. I can't say what I wrote back. I wrote back. <laughs> you, you did? You so and so. Yeah, it's like, why don't you heckle me when you're there? Like, what they would have to do. To, I was talking to my buddy the other day. Like, what they would have to do to get me to stop watching. You know, like. you love football. You yeah, watch football. Yeah, the, the commissioner could literally punt a baby across his <laughs> office <laughs> with his wingtips on. I'm still going to watch on Sunday. I don't condone the man's actions, <laughs> but it's football. They literally blame guys that she was a serial killer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you saw the Jeffrey Dahmer movie, it wasn't like, ah, somebody shoved a tuna fish sandwich up my ass and I confused people with food. So I, like, they didn't make like a big excuse for him. You know? She was a psycho killing people and she should have died. But I'm like watching it feeling guilt. Do they ever take responsibility for their act? Didn't she for the first five years have like midgets who wanted to bang their mailman's boyfriend? And she, and she didn't want to do it. But she stood on the heads of those little people for five years until she got... And then she's sitting there across from this guy like... Like, so how could you... You think you know exactly what he's doing. It's the stupidest thing I've ever oh, seen. God. I don't like how they interview the coaches, too, when they go to the half... Like, in, in halftime. Yeah. As they're running off. They shouldn't have to talk to somebody in, like, a ski parker. You're not even in football. Yeah. If, did you even play to the high school level? No, no, probably not. You took journalism. Yeah. Get out of here. What about... Yeah, it's a bunch of nerds. Interrupting people who know what they're doing. <laughs> Get, out of there. Yeah. Get your seat, and you'd sit there, and they're about ready to close the door, and you'd have that empty seat next to you, like, yes, like yes. the poor man's first class. You're like, oh shit, I'll bring the armrest up. I can actually be great. And then all of a sudden, some fat bastard gets on the platform, and you're like, no, no, no. You're, you're literally, you're like Quint at the end of Jaws, like sliding down the floor. Oh, oh. worried about this environmental stuff. You really are worried about it. Uh, I am and I'm not. I just also feel like, you know, it'd probably be a good thing if most of us died. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It would be. We had all these waffles, eggs, bacon, this whole layout. My brother was looking at half-eaten cube steaks. So he looked at my mom. He goes, Mom, can I have a waffle? She goes, no, that is your breakfast. And he goes, oh, Mom, I hate you. And my dad, without looking up, took a full glass of milk and threw it in his face. <laughs> This is what kills me. What kills you, me? You know how I would do it? What? I would, I would randomly sink cruise ships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Why would you randomly sink cruise ships? Because you, you get like 2,500 to 3,000 people a whack, right? And I don't think, I think it's a good mix of people to get rid of. To be honest with you. <laughs> What happens? Holding up a sign of somebody that they either know that's dying of cancer or died of it in the middle of the game. I'm trying to watch a game here. You know, no, there's a time and a place. Look, I know somebody. I know somebody that has died of cancer. I would never go to the movies with you and in the middle of it hit pause and be like, oh, by the way, Conan, I know this guy. <laughs> He died of cancer. It was horrific. I could have lifted him when Bruce became Caitlyn. That was like a national news story. Dude, you shave your beard off. People were like, oh my God, that's your chin? Wow. <laughs> this guy walked out. A dude came back a woman. You're just supposed to be like, oh yes, anyways, Caitlyn, that's all I was saying. <laughs> you know, this, this... I miss that guy. I miss him already. <laughs> <laughs> he should have told us. He should have given us a chance to say goodbye. I love, you know, I watched him. On the Olympics, uh -huh. I watched him on Chips. I watched him on that horrible show my wife watched where he just walks around in the background. <laughs> hey, <it's just> like... <laughs> there are women that wait, they're wait, uh, waited 22 days at Best Buy. They waited 22 days. And what did they get? 
What, what do you think they got? I do don't you, know. You I... think they got trampled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, if you're going to go there... So, yeah. Yeah, you don't get trampled grabbing your wig, you know? <laughs> the suspenders flying off. It's so sad. To do what? Get an above-ground pool for $30 off? <laughs> this, there is nothing... There is nothing in Walmart worth getting trampled over. I mean, there's nothing. It's, it's cross it, hop out of the line, and you wait till that first wave or two falls down, and then you go over the top like Walter Payton back in the day. Go a lot of it. But even then... Even then, you got to know where to go in the store. Like, where is the thing that is on sale, right? Where are those mint Milano cookies or whatever they have that you're going to make a beeline for? It's nice to be back here down in the south, man. I had a real weird experience last time I came down here. I was in Nashville, right? Sort of an awkward social situation, right? I'm sitting at this bar. There's this white dude sitting like two stools away. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. And that Terrell Owens story was in like sports news. So I try to make conversation. I'm like, man, look at this guy. This guy just signed a $40 million contract. He's already bitching, man. How much money do you need to make? And the dude looks at me. He's like, you know what I say? And then he looked over his shoulder, which I now know is the telltale sign that the N-word is coming, and it's coming hard. Oh yeah, it's not gonna be pronounced with the A, it's gonna be with the R, and he hit the R, he like stuck the landing. There was like a dismount, clan members high-fiving in the background, like doing the wave. Just out of nowhere. So now, immediately, I'm looking over my shoulder like, dude, what the hell are you doing? You know what I mean? I'm waiting for like this hail of black fists to come raining down on top of me. I hate when people do stuff like that. That dude made me part of like a potential ass kicking that I had nothing to do with. You don't do shit like that. He just had that word hot potato just threw it in my lap. Like, ah! Trying to pass it down to the next white dude. I hate when people do that, man. You know, it's like, dude, feel me out first. <laughs> Ask some questions. Do you like to fish? Have you ever fucked your sister, right? <laughs> I start rattling off answers, then you go old school. You give me a pamphlet, you tell me about your militia. <laughs> Don't just dive into it. That dude was one of the angriest people I ever met. I should have known that word was coming because he was just watching Terrell, right? Anytime I would bring up, look at man, that guy's talking trash. He would just like flip out. He won't shut up! <laughs> you know those people get like so mad they're not even looking at you? Their eyes are up. You just shut up and play the game! <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't even like Terrell, but now I love the guy. Because every time I see him talking trash, I know this idiot in Nashville He's just losing his mind, like kicking over his kitchen TV. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion. And uh, I got to get rid of them, man. I got to admit to you. I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. Because I got to, like, fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. All brand new shit. So when I show up, with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I ironed the shit, right? I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking 58 pairs of sneakers. Ever notice that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. I'll tell you, that's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. No, I was like the typical white dude from, like, the suburbs, you know what I mean? I had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was, like, those, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? Throw the fucking L.A. riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. I'm watching the videos. Look, he's got nice cars, he's got all the women, and he's still fucking mad. These black dudes are never happy. But after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. 
whether a black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> no. I figured out in my head, because I know from hanging out with them, that's the last shit that they're going to let go, the immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. <laughs> I'm not saying something's gonna happen. I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. <laughs> I'm not judging you. I'm not judging anybody. I didn't know anything about lotion. Never used it the first 33 years of my life. Never used it. So one night I was going out with this black girl, right? She was getting ready and she was just putting that shit on everywhere. Just slathering it on. I thought she had like a rash or something. I'm like, what do they got, like poison ivy? What's going on with you? She goes, no, I'm just making sure I'm not ashy. I said, ashy? She goes, dry skin. I went, wow. I guess I freaked her out a little bit because I was like, wow. Oh. She's like, well, white people get ashy too. I was like, yeah, you know, I don't think we do. Yeah, I've been alive for 33 years. No one has ever said, hey, Bill, uh, you look a little ashy. I never even heard that word until you said it. She's like, you're an idiot. Stick out your arm. So I stick out my arm, and ever so gently, she just drags her nails down. This smoke starts coming up. It's like pastry flakes flying off, track marks. She's signing her name. She's like, you see that? She goes, that's ashy. You're ashy? Freak me out. I'm like, holy shit, I'm ashy. I didn't know anything about it. All I knew was that I always got itchy in the winter. <laughs> Couldn't figure it out. Always got itchy in the winter. What the fuck do I get itchy? I thought it meant the bath towel was dirty. That's what I thought. And I would change it out and put a fresh one. Now I'm gonna be okay. Take a shower, dry off, fucking itching again. God damn it, I hate the winter. <laughs> See that? That's why you gotta hang out with everybody. <laughs> yeah. There's too much information in the world, and every group of people misses a little bit. White people totally missed the lotion seminar at some point in history. I don't know if it's because we can't see it. You know, black people get ashy. It looks like they like leaned up against a chalkboard or something. You know, they can see it. They miss it. Their friends help them out. Like, look at your ashy motherfucking elbow. What is wrong with you? Right? We miss that shit the way black people miss the whole register your weapons summit. Right? <laughs> Just never got the information. The amount of rappers who've been busted for the unregistered Glock in the car just blows my mind. It's like, why would you do that to yourself? Do you just want to make an album over the phone? Is that what it is? Is that like the new auto-tune or some shit? I don't know. No, it breaks my heart every time I see it. I just think, God, if he just had one white friend. If he just had one white friend in his entourage, the dude would have been sitting there going like, is that thing registered? <laughs> you out of your mind? Get it out of there. Get it out of there. Yeah, it's illegal. That's like fucking three to five mandatory. Dude, how do you, how do you not know that? That's the question. How do you not fucking know that? This guy's got unregistered. Okay, don't believe in these myths. Black don't crack. It's bullshit. They all put lotion on like every 20 minutes during the day. It's ridiculous. They all get a giant oil drum with a shit at home. Every morning they wake up, they dump themselves in it, shake themselves off, and walk out the door absolutely glistening. Glistening! All right? So I sit down, and I'm watching this documentary as a white dude, which is what I am. I'm looking out my white head, watching this white shit. It's coming back into my white eyes, getting whiter by the fucking second. <laughs> Right? Now my wife, on the other hand, she's black, right? Now I hate saying that because it makes it seem like I'm gonna start doing some stupid comparison jokes. You know those dumb white guy, black guy jokes? And it's always like the white guy's like, oh Jesus, I gotta, I gotta do my taxes. Can this chair hold me? And the black guy's always like, you need to loosen up. You gotta relax, man. You just gotta let it happen. All right? It's always the same stupid fucking joke. I hate those jokes, you know, because they're easy. And it's been my experience that it's just not true, you know? 15 years of being with her, there's really no difference, you know? Because at the end of the day, it's a woman. <laughs> All right? It's gonna be the same fights. I don't give a fuck who you're with. 
I'm not gonna lie to you. There might be more head movement and hand gestures <laughs> with different races of women. Possibly an index finger jabbing at your forehead, whatever the fuck that is. But at the end of the day, it's the same fights. So what's going on with us? Do you need to work on this? Why don't we communicate better, right? So she starts watching this shit as a black person, right? And uh, she's seeing all the racism, obviously, that I'm seeing. But she was catching all this subtle shit that I was too white to see. But I knew I was missing it because I just kept hearing her huffing and puffing. Just sitting next to me being like... Ah. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, somebody did something. I don't know what just happened, but I don't think that was good. So right when, I, right when I didn't think it could get any worse, it could get any more uncomfortable between the two of us, this fucking white dude comes on who evidently discovered Elvis. And he's like 190 years old, and he comes out and starts talking. He's just like, well, uh, basically, uh, I was looking for a white boy that could take the down and dirty, nasty blues and combine it with the pristine, angelic sounds of bluegrass. Yeah, that's what he was doing. He was subtly putting black shit down here while he was propping up the white shit. You know, the down and dirty, daddy not sticking around, drug infested neighborhood blues with the Jesus as white as me, hair the color of the sun, angelic bluegrass playing music, right? So at this point, my wife has like fucking steam coming out of her ears. So I make a judgment call. I, ju I just fucking shut it off, right? And she looks at me, she's like, why did you shut that off? Why did you shut it off? I was like, because you're about three minutes away from yelling at me like I produced this music. <laughs> All right? Let's just, just, just forget it. We'll watch something else. She's like, no, why can't we just watch the rest of this and then discuss it afterwards? It's like, it's, I, don't, I don't fucking do that. I just want to watch a documentary. I don't want to have a fucking lecture because of these fucking assholes. I didn't do anything. I'm just, I'm just sitting there watching TV. And not to mention, we're just, we're just going to get into an argument. She's like, well, why would we get into an argument? I'm like, ugh. All right, you know why? Because not for nothing, there was some black people in there saying some shit that I didn't agree with, you know? I'm not huffing and puffing. Yeah, I said that. Like a fucking idiot. And she just looks at me, she's like, like what black people? Like what black people that said what? And at that point, it's like you started the luge, right? You can't get off the fucking sled. <laughs> now you gotta have the argument. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, here we go. Guess we're having this. And I'm like, all right. All right, the black guy who brought up leg shaking, saying Elvis took leg shaking from us. It's like, really? Leg shaking? No, nobody thought to, 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 to fucking do this. Black people came up with that. You're telling me that? I'll even give you that. Let's say you came up with that, but where did that black dude learn how to do it? Didn't he watch some older black guy do it? Who, what, because he's the same color? He, he, he's not stealing, he's just carrying on the tradition. But if Elvis does it, oh, oh, what the fuck? Now he's the biggest thief ever? That doesn't make any sense to me. She goes, no, you idiot. It's not about the leg shaking, okay? It's, it's about, he appropriated a culture. He took all the music, he got all the money, got all the fame, he's called the king of it now, and he never gave a shit, not even a shout out. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Fair enough. You made about seven or eight good points there that I can't refute. <laughs> he, he appropriated a culture. I get it. You're right. She so goes, fine. Thank you. And I go, however, <laughs> not for nothing, do I get mad at you when you get on a skateboard and you start going down the fucking street? Do I get all offended like, hey, man, that's some white shit. Stop appropriating my culture, man. Some dirty white kid in Santa Monica came up with that, man. So she starts laughing. And I should have stopped there, but I'm a comedian, right? I'm like, oh, I'm getting a laugh. There's got to be a bigger laugh. So keep going, Bill. Let's come with another example. So I'm like, yeah, do I get mad at you when you fly from L.A. to New York in under six hours? And she just, yeah. <laughs> she just stares at me. She's just like, that was fucked up. So I've been seeing this girl recently, uh, this black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know, gone out like three, four times, you know. First time we hung out, we hung out in like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. <laughs> so shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like midtown, you know. Then the third time she called me at like 3.30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? 
So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> yeah, cause you know the deal, right? Basically a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st street, start getting like a little asthma, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, it's starting to get a little high up here. <laughs> you feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit, like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? How come there's no taxis up here? Dude, what's a bodega? I don't know what that is, let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. So I'm praying to God, she's gonna tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? But she goes, no man, you wanna get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you wanna get off at 125th Street. I'm like, ah, fuck, 125th Street. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. I'm gonna be surrounded on all four sides, I can't fucking do this. So, at this point, I'm really trying to hide like the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after like a black leader, you know? She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass. I'm like, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> Yo, dude, go on the internet and look up Adam Clayton. Did he kill a bunch of white people during the slave revolt? Dude, I ain't going up there till I know what Adam Clayton did. Fuck this shit. <laughs> so at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. <laughs> oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some shit, right? <laughs> I don't even know where the hell I'm at. But I see the street I want to go up. I want to go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building. But there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I want to walk by. So I'm like, fuck! <laughs> I thought I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I gotta walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know? But I'm also really, really white, you know? Like shockingly Caucasian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you're not ready for me, I can like surprise you. No, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical. Like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? I felt like I should have like a little pot of gold, like a rainbow behind me. Top of the morning to you, like it. Kind of dance my way past them. But it's been going all right, you know? Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know? I relax. Sit down, you know, watch a hip-hop countdown. <laughs> Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes gotta go through the same shit though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, right? <laughs> just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2. The radio's off. Like, dude, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass. I don't see any rims. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. God bless you. Thank you very much. I've noticed black people have the genius to put the curse word after they say the race of the person. We're white dudes, we always put it in front. And if we would just make that little adjustment, we could save so many careers, so many jobs could be saved in the white community if we would just put it after. You never notice that in conversation here, black guy being like, man, I was standing there, this Asian motherfucker came in, he starts talking about, you don't even hear it. You just sit there, oh, what?
what did this Asian motherfucker do? I would love to hear the rest of this story, right? Dude, I would tell the exact same story, right? I'm standing there, right? This fucking Asian comes in, right? Everybody's all like, whoa, whoa, hey, easy, easy, Jesus, dude. What year is it, you know? It's like, dude, I just said what he said. I just preempted the fuck. That's all I did. He suggested he's hooking up with people's mothers. I'm not even doing that. It's just a quick... I got it out of the way. You guys saw the Pope die? You saw that, right? Everyone was flipping out, man. I thought that was a good thing. I was, like, happy for him, man. He was in horrible health. You know what I mean? Everybody just wanted the guy to keep hanging on. And people are still flipping. Oh, my God, I think he's going to die. It's like, well, I think he's going to go to heaven. I mean, it's got to be better than that shit. So they got a new Pope now. They picked another old white dude, you know. And uh, they were actually in the running was this black dude from uh, Nigeria, right? They were actually considering making him the Pope. And I was kind of hoping he was going to win, you know. Not because I give a fuck either way. I just want to see all the black comics doing bits like the next day. Like, oh, white people scared now. <laughs> white people is scared now. Yeah, the Pope is black and shit. Couldn't you just feel it? That was like a half hour material. It went out the fucking window. The second they picked another white dude. It was endless. Pope Mobile's gonna be pimped out. And you better not be shooting at this Pope. A black Pope will be shooting back at your ass. Cause when white people get shot, etc., etc. So I sit down and I'm watching this documentary as a white dude, which is what I am. I'm looking out my white head, watching this white shit. It's coming back into my white eyes, getting whiter by the fucking second. <laughs> right? Now my wife, on the other hand, She's black, right? Now, I hate saying that because it makes it seem like I'm going to start doing some stupid comparison jokes. You know, those dumb white guy, black guy jokes. And you know, it's always like the white guy's like, oh, Jesus, I got I to gotta do my taxes. Can this chair hold me? The black guy's always like, you need to loosen up. You got to relax, man. You just got to let it happen. All right? It's always the same stupid fucking joke. I hate those jokes, you know, because they're easy. And it's been my experience that it's just not true. You know, 15 years of being with her, there's really no difference, you know, because at the end of the day, it's a woman. <laughs> All right? It's going to be the same fights. I don't give a fuck who you're with. I'm not going to lie to you. There might be more head movement and hand gestures with different races of women possibly an index finger jabbing at your forehead, whatever the fuck that is. But at the end of the day, it's the same fights. What's going on with us? Do you need to work on this? Why don't we communicate better, right? So she starts watching this shit as a black person, right? And uh, she's seeing all the racism, obviously, that I'm seeing. But she was catching all this subtle shit that I was too white to see, but I knew I was missing it because I just kept hearing her huffing and puffing, just sitting next to me being like... <sighs> And I'm just sitting there like, okay, somebody did something. I don't know what just happened, but I don't think that was good. So I've been seeing this girl recently. Uh, it's a black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we hung out like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. So she was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like Midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> yeah, cause you know the deal, right? Basically a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st street, start getting like a little asthma, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, it's starting to get a little high up here. You feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th street, you're like leaning on shit, like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? How come there's no taxis up here? Dude, what's a bodega? I don't know what that is. Let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. Shut the door. Uh, get me some water, though. Come back. Jesus Christ. Yes, you're, I'm a man. I asked you to do something. You're a woman. You go and you do it and you don't ask questions. Phil, I swear to <laughs> God. So anyway, it's like I was saying. They're sitting there bitch moaning and complaining about all the stuff they don't have. But we... You, you, you know, and it's like, you fucking outlive us. Really? You outlive us. Well, you know what? You have a birthday coming up. I know exactly what I'm getting you. Big bag of Fritos. You're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're always bitch moaning and complaining about what they don't have, right? You know, do they ever look around and see what they do have? A whole fucking platoon of shoes, huh, that their guy paid for. I'll tell you what I 
have. Right? <laughs> oh, snap. 12 to 6 right there, baby. <laughs> hey, Nia, do you know why I make more an hour than you? Because I'm better than you. <laughs> Actually, I had this black dude moved in my building, man. Lives on the same floor as me. He's one of these dudes. Every time he's, he's hilarious. Every time he says some shit, right after he's done saying the shit, he repeats like the most important part of like the previous sentence. It's hilarious. Everything he said will be like, yo, my man came in. He put that shit on the table. Put it on the table. Yo, this country's at war, son. War. I'm just looking at my friend like, dude, did you hear him the first time? Because I, I heard him the first time. I was smiling. I was nodding. Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion. I got to get rid of them, man. I got to admit to you. I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I iron the shit, right? I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. It's like a rule or something. Because God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10-day period. One of them's going to notice. All of a sudden just look at you funny like, this motherfucker's got the same shit he had on last Tuesday. Actually funny, you know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. No, I was like the typical white dude from, like, the suburbs, you know what I mean? I had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was, like, those, remember those... Early 90s gangster rap videos. Throw the f***ing L.A. riots in there, man. It was horrible PR. I'm watching the videos. Look, he's got nice cars. He's got all the women. And he's still fucking mad. <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. But after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether well, black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> I figured it out in my head. Because I know from hanging out with them, that's the last shit that they're going to let go. The immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy-doody, kind of mug-me kind of face. I'm not saying something's going to happen. I'm just saying. I'm paying attention. Let's be back here down the south, man. I had a real weird experience last time I came down here. I was in Nashville, right? Sort of an awkward social situation, right? I'm sitting at this bar. There's this white dude sitting like two stools away. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. And that Terrell Owens story was in like sports news. So I try to make conversation. I'm like, man, look at this guy. This guy just signed a $40 million contract. He's already bitching, man. How much money do you need to make? And the dude looks at me. He's like, you know what I say? And then he looked over his shoulder, which I now know is the telltale sign that the N-word is coming. And it's coming hard. Oh, yeah, it's not going to be pronounced with the A. It's going to be with the R. And he hit the R. He, like, stuck the landing. There was, like, a dismount. Clan members high-fiving in the background, like, doing the wave. Just out of nowhere. So now, immediately, I'm looking over my shoulder, like, dude, what the hell are you doing? You know what I mean? I'm waiting for, like, this hail of black fists to come raining down on top of me. I hate when people do stuff like that. That dude made me part of, like, a potential ass-kicking that I had nothing to do with. You don't do shit like that. He just had that word, hot potato, just threw it in my lap. Like, eh. <laughs> Trying to pass it down to the next white dude. I hate when people do that, man. You know, it's like, dude, feel me out first. Ask some questions. Do you like to fish? Have you ever fucked your sister, right? I start rattling off answers, then you go old school. You give me a pamphlet, you tell me about your militia. You don't just dive into it. That dude was one of the angriest people I ever met. I should have known that word was coming, because he was just watching Terrell, right? Anytime I would bring up, look at man, that guy's talking trash, he would just like flip out. He won't shut up! <laughs> You know those people get like so mad they're not even looking at you? Their eyes are up. You just shut up and play the game! <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't even like Terrell, but now I love the guy. Because every time I see him talking trash, I know this idiot in Nashville is just losing his mind, like kicking over his kitchen TV. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> It's like, no, it doesn't. All right? Look, look, no means no. No, that means no. All right, but no, stop it. What are you doing? Oh my God. You're being so bad. Stop it. No. Yeah, that's not a fucking no. That means I want to do it, 
but I'm afraid you're going to judge me, so I'm just going to make it look like it was your idea so you don't figure out that I've already performed this act with 40 other fucking people, right? But then, then you go to court and you get a bad read and there's some guy reading it. Oh, your Honor, she said no. Stop it. What are you doing? You're being so bad. Yeah, and you're just sitting there like, she didn't fucking say it like that. She didn't say it like that. So, I'm sick of Obama's wife. Yeah. This isn't some Republican rant either. It's just kind of first ladies in general. You know, I don't know what it is. All throughout my life, with each presidency, like these first ladies, they've just gotten more and more like, like, uh, like chatty. You know? More and more chiming in, like leaning into the frame, spitting out their ideas. It's just like, well, why are you talking? Right? You weren't elected. Shut up. Your husband's not running a lemonade stand here. He's running the country. You don't just chime in. Let me guess, is this considered sexist? It is? Why? Well, okay, you just nodded there, lady. Let me ask you this, all right? Let's say you had a leak in your house, okay? You call a plumber up, he shows up, and he goes, yeah, I think the leak's coming from the upstairs bathroom, we need to shut it up, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden his wife walks in, who isn't a plumber? And then goes, hey, you know, I'm actually thinking it's kind of pretty nice. Hey, wouldn't you be like, with all due respect, shut the f up. I need a plumber in this moment. I'll extend an olive branch here. All right, at some point, there's going to be the first female president, right? Exactly. Which means at that moment, you're going to have the first male first lady, right? And when that happens, that dude needs to shut his trap. I don't want to hear a word out of him. I want to hear from the president. You, sir, go do some first lady stuff, all right? Go get yourself some gloves that go up to your elbows. Smile and nod during speeches. Go put your own flair, redecorate in the White House, right? Which leads you to Michelle Obama, right? Now she's sitting there holding up those hashtags. Remember that hashtag, bring back our girls? Remember that? It's like, I, it blew my mind. It's like, why are you showing me that? I'm a stand-up comedian. Like, what am I going to do to get those girls back? Why don't you look across the dinner table? It's like, you see that guy? That is the leader of the free world. Tell him to pick up a phone, call some Navy SEALs and solve it. What, what am I going to do? Show up with a sharpened mic stand? Hey, Michelle said to bring him back. I, I will get married, you know. I was making that. I'll definitely get married someday, you know. I, I, you know, I love women and everything. I'm just finding I'm not, like, compatible with them. You know what I mean? You ever just feel that? Like, women have, like, too much energy for me. You know what I mean? Like, you can't have a day off when you have a girlfriend. You ever notice that? It's almost like they see that open day. They're like, oh, my God, let's go fill it up with shit. <laughs> no, then they just come at you with one horrible idea after another. Horrible ideas. Like, you want to make some sandwiches and go to the park? You want to go to the container store, get some containers for your t-shirts? This is the worst one. Ever get this one? You want to go to brunch? You want to go to brunch on Sunday? And inside you're like, fucking no! But you can't say that, right? You got to keep them happy. So what do you do? You agree. Like, yeah, let's go to brunch. What a great idea. Why would you want to sleep in on a Sunday when you can go pay $18 for eggs? Now nah, you're thinking. Now nah, you're thinking. Then we can sit around to listen to your friends have moronic conversations about the eggs. Like, is that pesto? Is that pesto in your omelet? Oh, it's asparagus. It's asparagus. I thought it was pesto. Oh, you just want to flip the whole fucking table over? Horrendous! I'm trying to learn to pick my battles when I date girls. I usually argue with women all the time, man. I'm stupid like that, you know? Like, I dated this girl one time. She was, like, really into, like, women's issues. So we used to always have these dumbass arguments. Like, one time she came up to me and she goes, okay, explain this to me, Bill. 
Why does a guy make more an hour to do the exact same job, huh? Hmm? Hmm? I go, I'll tell you why. Because in the unlikely event that we're both on a Titanic and it starts to sink, for some fucked up reason, you get to leave with the kids and I have to stay. Yeah, that's why I get the dollar more an hour. No, think about it. If there's a house fire, it's always women and children first. I got to stand there with like the back of my shirt on fire going, let's go people, let's go, let's go. So that's how I look at it. No, it's a dollar an hour surcharge. That if something fucked up happens, either I can't leave or I got to like get in the way of it to give you a head start, like rabbit dog, run honey, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. You hear a bump in the night, I got to go check it out. Like, yes, he does have a knife. Anytime there's a hostage situation, who do they negotiate for first? Well, at least let the women and children go. Well, what about me? <laughs> Bullets hurt me too. Why the fuck do I got to stay in the vault? <laughs> no, that's my point, man. Where are all the feminists in those situations? You know what I mean? You can't find them. There are no feminists in a house fire. That's a, that's a guarantee. You could take the most hardcore feminist, some chick right in your face, like, he's showing his time of a bitch. Little short, little haircut, the whole nine yards, right? <laughs> Second those flames break out, she's gonna twist those little hairs into pigtails. No, I'm just a girl. I wanna go play jump rope. And leave you standing in a burning house like you're not flammable. No, but I'm not, I'm not a dick though. I'm not, I'm not saying I think a woman should make a doll less an hour to do the same job. All I'm saying is if you're gonna make what I make when the boat sinks, you better be standing right there next to me, listening to that guy play the cello. <laughs> then you get the corner office. You get all the benefits or whatever. So let's talk, uh, let's talk white women here, shall we? <laughs> Let's talk white women. White women, you're amazing. Amazing your accomplishments over the last few years. I gotta tell you, the way white women somehow hijack the woke movement, generals around the world should be analyzing this. <laughs> Just to refresh your memory, the woke movement was supposed to be about people of color not getting opportunities, the at-bats that they deserve, finally making that happen. And it was about that for about eight seconds. And then somehow, White women swung their Gucci booted feet over the fence of oppression and stuck themselves at the front of the line. I don't know how they did it. I've never heard so much complaining in my life from white women. My life is so hard eh, with my SUV and my heated seats. You have no idea what it's like to be me. Trash and white guys, the nerve. Where's the camera? The nerve of you white women. Let me, I don't, listen, I don't want to speak ill of my bitches here, okay? I don't, but let's, let's go back in history here, okay? You guys stood by us toxic white males through centuries of our crimes against humanity. You rolled around in the blood money, and occasionally when you wanted to sneak off and hook up with the black dude, if you got caught, you said it wasn't consensual. Yeah, that's what you did. That's what you did. So why don't you shut up, sit down next to me, and take your talking to. <laughs> Thank you. I was going back and forth with somebody um, this morning, an East Coast friend of mine who I hadn't talked to in a while. How you enjoy being a dad and blah, 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 blah. And then she hits me up with the whole, hey, I'm turning 50 this year. I am not happy about it. I said, yeah, I turned 50 last year. She goes, how was turning 50 for you? You know, she goes, you're a guy. You probably don't care. It's much harder for a woman, especially with our careers. Oh, did I have fun with that? You know, <laughs> I just wrote back. Where? Jesus fucking Christ. You know what I mean? White women complaining is one of the funniest. It's like you got a fucking house and a beautiful family. What is the fucking pr it's so much? Harder for me. You're going to outlive me by six to eight years. So me turning 50 is like me turning like 56, 57, 58. 
You don't hear me complaining, you know? You never hear me complain on this podcast. This is nothing but positivity, rainbows and fucking unicorns. Um, yeah, I love that shit. It's harder, for, it's harder for women to go to the gym. It's harder for us to lose weight. Well, then fucking work harder, you know? Everybody's different. Oh, is that where it's harder? You know what's, you know what's harder for me? Uh, uh, trying to get some woman to pay the cover charge and buy me drinks. You know, it's harder for me to divorce court, uh, outliving you. I mean, it, 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 it balances out, ladies. Getting child support. Yeah, that's harder for me because I'll be the one paying it. Then all of a sudden it costs 900 grand a month to raise a fucking two-year-old, right? I, I just don't understand the constant complaining by white women. Okay, you're white. You live in America. Shut up. Okay, wait till the other problems are solved and then we'll get to you. You're at the meat counter. Your number isn't up yet. Wait your turn. All right. Wait your turn, Abigail. Do you know how much harder? It's so much easier for you to go to jail. It's not easier. Men's lives are harder because we have to live with you guys. <laughs> oh, man. I want to become friends with a lesbian couple. And I want to, like, be friends with, like, the, 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 the chick in the relationship that's got to handle more of the dude shit. You know, because, you know, opposites attract. And I would think even like in the lesbian community, there's going to be somebody, you know, who's out there swinging the axe, getting the fucking firewood while the other one's in there making the muffins. That's the lesbian I want to talk to right into my podcast, please. You know, I want to know if, if those lesbians on average die sooner than 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 the, the, the dainty lesbian, you know. The lesbian who's got to go out on the fucking roof and adjust the fucking direct TV satellite fucking thing <laughs> in the middle of the fucking rain. That's who I want to. That's who I want to hear from. That's the study I would be doing. As if collectively you all just like, well, <laughs> what does it look like? I'm not gonna lie to you. It, it still looks like a dead body, but it looks way fucking better than that pull-up doll from 30 years ago. And that's what scares me, because everything gets better, right? You look at when cars first came out, the stupid horn, ah, you had a crank started, you'd run over your best friend. Now you can start one up with a remote control from like 50 yards away, right? Remember when airbags first came out? They just had one for the driver. <laughs> My family! <laughs> Just save me! <laughs> and then eventually, they got airbags for everybody. Well, these robot sex dolls are gonna be no different. Okay, they're just gonna keep getting better and better and better. And these fucking nerds are not gonna be making any regular looking robot dolls, right? You know, some girl next door, you know, just some plain Jane, the chick your mom likes being like, well, there's a nice girl you can settle down with. She knows how to cook. Fuck that. They're gonna make Victoria's Secret supermodels, just absolutely like Paris runway looking supermodels. And you're gonna be able to come home to one of these things and it's gonna laugh at all your jokes. Ah, 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 It's gonna sit down and watch the game with you like it doesn't get any better than this. Yes, it does. And it's gonna get up and make you a fucking, I don't know, a butt cake or a meat pie, whatever the fuck you people eat, right? There's not going to be a human woman in here that's going to be able to compete with that for longer than 90 minutes, even on your birthday. By the third trip to the fridge, she's going to be like, yeah, fucking get it yourself. What am I, your slave? Go fuck yourself. And after you've been with one of these robots, like sex dolls, this, you, you're not going to be able to go back to a real woman, right? With all her hopes and dreams and her needs. You're going to be coming home. She's like, what is going on with you? We're not connecting. We need a date night. All you'll be thinking is like, how do I shut this fucking thing off? What is it, on nagging mode? Why isn't it blowing me right now? I, I clearly entered the room. I entered the room, it's supposed to drop to its knees and blow me, I don't understand. Yeah, like your ego is gonna be at like a dictator level. Like me and my man tits have arrived. Service me, say that I am your Lord. Yeah, that's it. That's it, you're not gonna be able to go back to a real woman. And then nobody's gonna be fucking women, so they're gonna get lonely, so they're gonna have to create a doll for you guys, right? A giant fucking, I don't know, I don't know what you guys are into. I don't pretend to know, like some giant Brad Pitt looking fucking robot doll, fucking eight pack abs, a robot dick down to the floor. You know, <laughs> holds both your hands when you tell a story. All right. <laughs> well, whatever you're into. 
opens a bottle of wine at 12 noon. It's got to be five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> I think they're gonna fuck us into extinction. Because at that point, the only people left having sex with other human beings are gonna be hipsters and the homeless, right? Because <laughs> hipsters, they, they love all the old shit, right? Cassette tapes, frisbees, dressing like a cobbler, whatever the fuck it is they're doing, right? But even a homeless guy, you know, after like, I don't know, a couple of years, he'll be able to drag some old, one-legged, fucked out robot model out of the trash, drag it back to its lair, and even, that thing will still be building them up, you know, just laying there like, I don't think you smell that bad. <laughs> this is my favorite bridge. <laughs> and we're all gonna fucking die off. And what's gonna be left to fight these robots off is gonna be an entire generation of hipster spawn. Yeah, and they're gonna go to war ironically. Dressing, dress like, I don't know, fucking growing Civil War beards, dressing like Star Wars action figures, and they're gonna get fucking slaughtered. <laughs> and right when they get down to the last 30, there's gonna be some liberal robot going like, we should save a few for posterity. Right? They're just gonna stick them in a zoo. Maybe this little hodgepodge of what was left. You know, black, white, Latin, Asian, gay, straight, trans, whatever, whatever the fuck, right? And they're still gonna be arguing with each other. The robots are just be standing outside going, I love it when they cross their legs. <laughs> yeah, and this is the fucking world that I brought my daughter into. Like, I actually am legitimately scared about them. But I got, I don't know. I gotta tell you though, becoming a dad though was the greatest, is the greatest fucking thing that ever happened to me, man. It really is. I don't have any jokes about my kids. No, it is. And you're applauding my wife. She did all the work. Yeah. Yeah, knocking a woman up, that's easy. You just, you just have fun. You, unprotected sex, bam, you knock them up, and then they have to deal with it, you know? No matter how much they try to drag you into it, it really is, it's their show, you know? I always say my wife, my, when my wife was pregnant, I say my wife, you know, she's pregnant. And then I always have these people go, excuse me, you're supposed to say we're pregnant? You're supposed to say we're pregnant? It's like, well, I'm not a seahorse, so. <laughs> I'm not fucking pregnant. My wife is pregnant. Look at her, she's putting on weight. Her feet are swelling up. You know, she's miserable, fucking miserable. I'm still doing pull-ups. I'm crushing it while being pregnant. I'm still drinking. Had to find her a new home. Well, I finally had to admit that she was fucking crazy. I got a crazy rescue dog. And uh, yeah, it was one of these fucking dogs, man. It, it, try, it tried to kill both my parents. It tried to kill my father-in-law. It bit one of my friends. I'd have family come over, friends or whatever. We have to stick it in the back room, like lock the door. And the, like, the first hour, it'd just be throwing itself up against the door. Ah, I'll fucking kill all you motherfuckers. I'll kill all you motherfuckers. Looking under the door, I can see your feet. I know what you smell like. I'll follow you home. I'll find you. I'll fucking kill all of you. And we were just in like total denial, like, no, she's just a little, you know, a little scared because she was abused. And we got like a trainer and all of that shit. And he finally just said, listen, man, this is one of these dogs nature said no to, but people said yes to. So I'm like, Jesus Christ, you could have told me that 10,000 fucking dollars ago, you know? So now my wife, she's five months pregnant. She's six months, seven, eight months pregnant. It's just the fucking, this, this thing just hanging over my head. And finally, I just said to my wife, I'm like, we gotta do something about this, man. I'm not gonna be this guy in the news being like, well, you know, uh, the dog loved me and my wife, so I figured it'd be all right to let it sleep near the bassinet. And well, you can imagine my surprise the next morning. Yeah, I wasn't gonna be that guy in the news whose dog ate his baby, right? I gotta get rid of this thing. So we call my trainer and he goes, all right, I'll take it, okay? So thank God they're not gonna put the dog down or anything like that, so I'm like, thank God. So he goes, I'll come back in a week. And it was very sad because we both love this dog like, like with all our hearts, right? And what amazed me though, was over that week, the way my wife handled grief versus me. It was so mature, she just like took it on. I just went into denial. I was just like, well, I'm not giving it away tomorrow, so I'm not gonna think about it. And I just called the dog up in the bed, started petting her and lashing out at people for no fucking reason, right? <laughs> my wife, on the other hand, she just went right into the bathroom that night, she was brushing her teeth, I could just hear her quietly crying like, hoo hoo, hoo hoo hoo. I swear to God, I was on the bed and I literally, I got mad at her. I didn't yell at her, just, I had it just internal, you know? And I was just thinking like, why is she having the proper emotion in this fucking moment? 
Why isn't she just blocking it out the fucking way I am, right? Just don't deal with it until you fucking give it away and then just start yelling at people the, the, the way I do. Right, and that's what we did. I just blocked it out, and every night she would cry a little bit more the whole week. <laughs> Till the night before, she's like, <laughs> right? And what I didn't realize was she had cried herself into acceptance. And meanwhile, my emotions were still at the starting line. And then there's a knock at the door, and she goes, okay, he's here, go get the dog. And I'm like, hey, Cleo. And she popped her head up, and I saw her wagging her fucking tail, and all of a sudden, eight years of conditional love all started bubbling up, and I was like, oh, fuck, not now! Not now! So I just pushed it down. I just walked at her like some weird game show host. Hey, how are you? I'm smiling for no reason, all right? Now we're going for a walk. I'm just gonna say what we're doing so I don't think about what I'm feeling. And I just walked out, handed the leash to the new owner, pet her on the head, didn't even look her in the eye because I knew I couldn't, and just turned around and walked away from something that I loved more than I had loved anything in my life up to that point. Don't tell my wife, right? <laughs> So then I come back into the house, all right? And she's just looking at me. She knows I'm out of my fucking mind. She's like, are you okay? Is everything all right? Do you want to talk about it? We can go out and get something to eat or something. I'm like, no, I'm fine. Sometimes you have to be up here and think logical and not be in your heart. I'm just going to go into the bathroom for a second. And I went in and I closed the door and for 0.8 seconds cried like a little boy before I put the lid back on the jar. Fastened it back and just added it to the shelf of anger that sits in every man's chest. Yeah. But wonder in that moment who that I love in my life is gonna pay for that in the future <laughs> like where am I gonna be family reunion bed bath and beyond how many fucking towels do we need Jesus Christ it's a fucking sickness with you where is this coming from I just don't understand where this is coming from listen you guys are so awesome thank you so much for coming out and a great time thank you thank you thank you Thank you guys so much. It's been the best two days of my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night.